Hey guys, Frank here. Welcome back to the Stargazer Man channel. Today I'm going to do a quick preview of the new Dwarf 3 Smart Telescope. For those of you who aren't familiar, the Dwarf 3 is part of a new generation of upstart devices known as Smart Telescopes. And these are compact cameras essentially designed to make astronomy more accessible and engaging, especially for newcomers. So they blend advanced imaging technology with user-friendly features and unlike traditional telescopes that require manual setup, alignment and a knowledge of the night sky, smart telescopes come equipped out of the box to get you imaging and observing straight away. Now there's pros and cons to these but that's for another time. I'm patiently waiting on delivery of the Dwarf 3 but I wanted to take a moment to go over some of the key specs and features so that you're in the loop and then once it arrives I'll be deep diving with a full practical use review so make sure you hit the like and subscribe buttons to get notified when that video drops. So let's take a look at their promotional video and I can make a few comments as we go. So the Dwarf 3 is a pretty versatile little scope you can use it both for astronomy and for terrestrial bird watching etc. Um, it does come with apochromatic lenses and a pretty decent sensor as well for the price. Uh, easy setup and control, I can't argue about that. It is extremely simple to set up and the control in the app is quite intuitive. Um, it does have built in um, light pollution filters and other filters as well that help to get the best uh, images. Obviously it's got the live stacking feature um, that uses AI to produce the uh, clear images on your screen and you can take those uh, images uh, from the scope into an external um, program if you want to uh, further process those. Obviously it's got this birding aspect to it as well which is quite cool and the NFC connection looks very interesting as well uh, just makes it more um, efficient to connect with and um, it's got a really crazy um, gigapixel um, panoramic feature that I'm uh, really excited to try out. Like the Dwarf 2, it also allows you to do some solar imaging with the supplied solar filters. So let's take a quick look at the specs and compare the differences between the Dwarf 3 and the Dwarf 2. We'll just do a high level on this and I can go more in depth on the next video. So the aperture diameter has increased from 24 millimeters to 35 millimeters, which gives it a focal length now of 150 millimeters. So this is going to give it a slightly narrower field of view, but better resolution. The sensor has changed. Uh, it's been upgraded from the um, Sony IMX415 to the Sony IMX678. So that's a significant upgrade, giving a much better quality uh, image, got better dynamic range, um, we can go into that again in detail on the other video. Built in filters. So the original Dwarf 2 had simply an IR cut filter for visible um, imaging during the day. Um, and then it also had uh, for the uh, telescopic view uh, an IR cut filter and an IR pass filter. So the new built in filters for the Dwarf 3 have visible, astro and dual band and then the wide also has astro for day and night use. Um, big change in the battery so the Dwarf T 2 used to have a interchangeable batteries. Um, you could buy an extra one or if you got the deluxe package it came with two batteries and these were five six hundred milliamp hours. Um, the inbuilt battery on the Dwarf 3 is 10,000 milliamp hours um, and it, you can also um, externally charge that as you go if you need to uh, provide more power throughout your imaging session during the night. Um, the storage has been increased as well to 128 gigabytes um, the the dwarf maybe not increase is the right uh, term to use because the dwarf 2 um, came with a supplied 64 gigabyte sd card and then you could upgrade that to 512 gigabyte max um, but the 128 gigabyte um, emmc uh, type storage that comes with the dwarf 3 will i believe be perfectly fine for the for any night's imaging then for shooting modes, the main difference is that the uh, wide field uh, camera comes into play and you can do photo, video, astro, pano, burst and time lapse with that. NPU is for the Dwarf 3 is 5 tops and for the Dwarf 2 is 2 tops. 
Um, I'm not really 100% sure what this, maybe somebody who knows exactly what these um, stats are about. Uh, my belief is that it's got to do with calculations per second for uh, AI, um, Terra operations per second or something, I believe. So looks like it's increased in that range. Telephoto video is now increased to 30 frames per second as opposed to 26 frames per second and then obviously you have the extra stats for the uh, telephoto picture the wide angle uh, the wide angle picture and then the maximum exposure time is now increased from 15 seconds to 60 seconds and it says in eq mode i want to talk about that separately because i think this is probably one of the biggest differences between the dwarf 2 and the dwarf 3 a game changer as far as i'm concerned when it comes to imaging uh, with such a small setup other differences then really are the nfc one touch uh, there's astro mosaic and wide angle astrophotography so um, the wide angle astrophotography kind of sits in here at the end of the list, but I'm really interested to see when I get it, what can you actually do with that feature? So I've seen some examples of wide angled Milky Way photography of which I, I really love doing some of my other videos. You'll see that, um, I do that quite extensively. Uh, so I'm quite interested to see how this little scope handles, um, the wide field, uh, views of the Milky Way. And then the size, it's slightly bigger from what we can see here and the weight, it's only slightly um, heavier and heavy is <laughs> probably not the right term to use for this telescope because at 1.3 kilograms, I had uh, eyepieces <laughs> that practically were heavier. You know, 1.3 kilograms is practically nothing when it comes to um, a telescope uh, or camera that can, you know, kind of pack all of that technology uh, into the size that it is. So going back to one of the features um, that was included in the specs is the ability to shoot in EQ mode. So this is also available now in the Dwarf 2, but I think um, the sensor that's provided in the Dwarf 3 um, and the improved tracking, uh, this is really going to produce some fantastic images. Um, effectively, what you're doing is you're polar aligning the telescope so that it neutralizes uh, the effects of the Earth's rotation when you're trying to track the target. So um, you just get better results because there's less movement um, from image to image. And I've had a quick look um, on the manual and they've obviously gone to great lengths to uh, test this. Um, clearly the beta testers and the early uh, testers have given some incredible feedback to Dwarf Lab. And again, um, kudos to Dwarf Lab for really paying attention and listening to um, both the user community and uh, the beta testers um, because they obviously take all of that information um, on board and really deliver when it comes to upgrading um, both the app and also some um, new ideas for the use of the telescope. So it looks like it's a pretty simple setup. You just literally have to tilt your device, um, the Dwarf 3, uh, towards Polaris and um, the inbuilt software will also do some calculations to see are you correctly polar aligned. Uh, there are various YouTube videos uh, that are already out um, from the well-known YouTubers like uh, Kuev the Lazy Geek and others that have shown how this can be done. Still no harm in reading the manual and following the steps, but it looks like it's a pretty simple uh, setup to do. And I believe that the results are just going to be second to none. So I'm really excited to see uh, that uh, in action when I get my hands on the scope. OK, so to recap, um, it looks like the Dwarf 3 is a, a huge upgrade in comparison to the Dwarf 2, in, in my opinion. Um, I think it's going to really open up the world of uh, astrophotography and astronomy for a lot of newcomers, which is always a good thing. Um, so just quickly to go through some of the specs again, um, better optical performance. We've got a 35 millimeter aperture apochromatic lens. Um, there's a Sony IMAX 678 Starvis 2 sensor. It really baffles me how they can fit all of this technology and this equipment into uh, such a small device for the price point. Um, 
there is the various filters and also then they've now included extra output formats um, for your images which also will help when you want to kind of move to the next level of uh, image processing um, you know when you want to kind of advance uh, your skills to get the most um, I suppose uh, clearest images uh, from the shots that you've gathered. So there is powerful automatic post-processing, but um, once you've kind of, um, you know, seen what you can do uh, from external um, applications, uh, I think that that's kind of the next step, natural progression that you normally will take when you start to do astrophotography. For some people, it's perfectly fine. They just want to take these shots and share them on social media. But for other people, then I think they get bitten by the bug and, uh, yeah it's kind of incurable um once you get bitten that's pretty much it there's no going back so the app seems to have gone through quite a lot of updates we have obviously the new atlas feature um and there's also a new favorite um, section recommended section um which is um, super helpful when you're actually trying to decide what you're going to shoot for the evening and you can also then plan um, your setup and plan uh, the targets that you want to shoot and set timers etc so I think this is a really neat feature um, I wish I had the weather here to be able to leave my scope out unattended but in our country weather can change at a second's notice and that would be disastrous uh, so yeah all in all I have to say I'm super excited and I uh, can't wait for for this scope to drop on my doormat I will immediately move to create some content so that I can share with you guys what the results are so let's talk about prices it's uh, 4.99 US dollars and in Europe that translates to 4.70 595 euro i'll drop some links in the description below if you want to check out further details on the dwarf website and other reputable resellers for now that's pretty much uh, the top level view of the dwarf 3 i wish you guys clear skies and keep looking up